At the Trudy McIntosh, she was in Lithuania for the summit. So, Trudy, why is this so significant? Well, Tom, Indo-Pacific leaders are going to take centre stage here on day two, the final day of the NATO summit here in Lithuania. The Prime Minister will have an opportunity to address all NATO allies behind closed doors on the security challenges in our region. But first, this so-called grouping of the Indo-Pacific Four, it includes Australia, Japan, South Korea and New Zealand. They're going to meet first just by themselves and then later we're going to see them alongside the NATO Secretary General and presenting their case directly to those here in Europe. The Prime Minister expected to once again reiterate that he believes it is important for NATO to have a role in our region. This is a rebuke of the argument we heard from Paul Keating that NATO has no place in terms of extending its outreach to the Indo-Pacific. We put this to the Prime Minister. He says this will be his message to NATO allies. What we've come to say is that uh, our, our nations, based in the Indo-Pacific, uh, believe in the rule of law, that we support national sovereignty, that we support multilateral forums. What happens in one part of the world has an impact in our part of the world. And our presence here is a reflection of that. Trudy, the final meeting for the PM will be with President Zelensky. A big question is, will there be any more military assistance announced? Well, Tom, it seems to me uh, it would be incredibly unlikely that the Prime Minister has come all this way to Lithuania to meet face to face with Vladimir Zelensky and have nothing new to contribute. We saw that announcement in Germany that Australia's Air Force will take part in these surveillance operations over the skies of Europe. Um, we will f find out later today exactly what new could be on offer here. We know Ukraine has been asking for more military hardware, including more of those Bushmaster vehicles, but even the Hawkeyes. There's problems with the brakes, and that was part. Part of the reason why the PM said uh, it's not advised that we send them, but Ukraine says they're happy to take anything we can give. More broadly, here at the NATO summit, the most politically charged and sensitive matter has been over whether Ukraine should become a formal member of this military alliance. It's clear that that is not going to happen anytime soon, at least until after Russia's invasion comes to an end. But it's been pretty clear that uh, Ukraine's president is frustrated with how NATO leaders are dealing with this matter. He says they need to have a timeline to provide clarity to those in Ukraine and as a deterrent, really, uh, to Russia's president. This was... Um, uh, the, Russian, the Ukrainian ambassador, I should say, back home in Australia, explaining why um, the president is so frustrated with this summit. We believe that it's very important for Ukraine to get a clear indication of when we're going to join NATO. And that was the expectation. It was not the expectation of getting the accession immediately in Vilnius, but what President Zelensky, and this, that was his disappointment that he communicated uh, quite clearly, was that we didn't get the time limit. All right, so Trudy, the other potential story was a, a trade deal between Australia and the EU. It's not going to happen. Both sides digging in here. Yeah, that's certainly the case, Tom. There had been a quiet um, optimism behind the scenes that we could have been on the verge of a breakthrough when it comes to this uh, EU free trade agreement. It's been in negotiations since back in 2018, but it's pretty clear now, Trade Minister Don Farrell, that they have not reached a deal whilst he's been negotiating in Brussels, that the next time they're going to be able to have a real discussion about this is not now until next month. But Australia is playing hardball, make no mistake about it. It wants to see greater access for our agricultural products into the lucrative market. The PM's been making this case when he's had back-to-back -back meetings with European leaders. Some support, we saw that from the German um, Chancellor, also from Portugal. But countries like France seem um, unwilling at this stage to provide greater access to Australia. It seems the view at home, though, Tom, is uh, farmers, the opposition, do not want the government to do a deal for the sake of it, and it seems clear now that that's not going to happen. The PM are not willing to just get a political win here. He wants this to actually be a meaningful outcome. On that, he will have a chance to meet with the EU Commission president later today here. So we'll get a bit of an update on where they're tracking in terms of if this is actually going to be possible any time this year.